Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's episode we're going to be changing rear springs on an Audi A6 on the C7 chassis. Now this chassis does come with two different types of springs, sports and the standard. So it's quite important to check which type of springs your vehicle takes before you order them. Now I will also say before we go any further that this video is for the more confident of the mechanics because I'm not going to do it the official way. I'm going to do it a little bit of a shortcut way because the official way involves dropping the rear subframe to get the springs out, which can turn into quite a lengthy job. So I'm going to be using ratchet straps to remove the springs, which I'll show you how to do in the video a little bit later on. Now you will still need a set of spring compressors to compress your new springs to then use the ratchet straps to get the spring back in the vehicle. But with the ratchet straps, you will need some relatively small straps, which these ones are actually one inch or 25 mil wide, rated to 1.6 ton. And it's also an endless strap, so you've actually got the strap attached to the ratchet. There's no hooks or anything involved. And I've actually cut these ones down to be a bit shorter so that you've not got excess strap hanging around everywhere. Now, I will leave a link in the description for a similar set of straps to these, so you can get the correct ones, or you can source them yourself, it's entirely up to you. I'll also leave a link in the description for a set of spring compressors as well. Now, other tools you're going to need is a 13 mil spanner or a socket, doesn't matter. A 16 mil socket with a small extension bar, preferably on a ratchet and a tape measure, which I'll show you why a little bit later in the video. And it is quite important that you have an axle stand for this purpose, even two axle stands, and you will see why a little bit later. Now you've got all the tools that you require. Let's get outside to get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do once you've jacked the vehicle up in the air is actually to get an axle stand underneath the vehicle, underneath the actual subframe of the vehicle there, so you can drop the weight of the vehicle down onto your axle stand. That then allows you to use your jack to jack under here to compress your suspension spring so you can get the ratchet straps around them so you can then drop the jack down and remove the suspension spring. So you're going to want to position your jack actually straight under where the spring actually is so there's actually nice a nice flat surface just under here that you can actually jack up on to compress the spring so let's go ahead and jack that up now when you jack it up you do want to make sure it's just only just lifting off of the axle stand just to make sure the spring is compressed as far as it can be compressed. And now once it's jacked up in the air, you're going to want to go ahead and undo the two 16 mil bolts at the top of the shock absorber up here. Now once you've undone both of the bolts from the top of the shock absorber and it's free, you then want to move on to actually removing the two 13 mil bolts and then break caliper, the two slider bolts at the back here. I mean, there's one just there, and then there's one just at the top here as well. I'll move the light in there. See how there. Yep. One at the top there, and one just there as well. So you wanna go ahead and remove those two bolts so you can then move the brake caliper out of the way to give you a bit more space to access the spring. Now as you can see here, actually if I move a bit closer, you can see as I'm turning that bolt, it's actually turning the whole slider. So you're going to need to get a spanner on the back end there. I can't remember exactly what size that is. Maybe a 14 mil. Once you've undone both of the bolts out of the sliders and removed them, you then want to remember to release your parking brake and then give this caliper a bit of a twist just to back off the pads a little bit so you can get it off of the disc. So at this stage, it can actually be quite helpful if you put a screwdriver just in the front here, just to give it a bit of a wiggle, back and forwards. There you go, as you can see, that's pretty much off. And once you remove that, you want to sit that out the way somewhere safe. And you may want, to, may want to cable tie that up somewhere around the back there just so you don't put any pressure on the actual brake pipes and the cables around there. You can leave the brake pads in their position 
because it's only taking this out of the way to give a bit more space to access the spring. So now, once you've removed your brake caliper, you can then go ahead and put your ratchet straps onto the spring to keep it compressed when you drop the jack back down so you can then remove it out of the vehicle. I'll put the straps on now and show you how I've done it. Once you get the ratchet strap on, you can actually give the strap a couple of clicks just to get it under a bit of tension. You can actually see it, it does compress the spring a little bit more as well. You don't need to go too mad, just a few clicks to take up the tension of the spring. Let's go ahead and put the second strap on and I'll show you exactly how I did them and what part of the spring I went around. Also, because it's so tight in here, when you actually feed the strap through the top of the spring, which is most likely the easiest way, when the strap drops down to the bottom, you may need to use a bit of a screwdriver just to fish it out around the bottom part of the spring. It just makes it a bit easier, that's all. Okay, so now I have both the ratchet straps on. You can see I've gone over the highest point here and also the lowest part of the spring underneath there. And the same with the rear strap. And you want to try and get them as opposite as possible. It's not easy to get them exactly opposite because there's absolutely no space in here to work whatsoever. And that's the reason I'm showing you to use these, this way of doing it because you can't get spring compressors in here. But at this point, once you've got your ratchet straps on and a couple of clicks so they're nice and tight, you can actually go ahead and lower your jack down to then hopefully enable you to be able to get this spring out. So now I have the spring out, I've actually removed the top part that sits in the top of the spring that goes into the bodywork just underneath there. But what I will show you is actually what happened here. You're going to try to avoid this happening. This happened because the, the ratchet straps weren't completely opposite each other. So if I get the old light on here, you can see the spring one of the ratchet straps have actually slipped to one side and then this happens to the spring which actually makes it a bit more difficult to get out of the vehicle so that's why it's important to try and get those ratchet straps completely opposite to each other so it doesn't do this because this just makes it a lot, whole lot harder than it needs to be it still is possible to to get out you just need to get a bit of leverage under here somewhere to basically push this all down to give a bit more space to actually remove the spring but anyway it's out anyway so now we can move on to show you how to compress the new spring with your spring compressors and put the ratchet straps on ready to put it back in the vehicle just another quick note as well before you actually compress your new spring you want to take notice of actually how big the gap in here is so from the bottom there where the spring sits in to the top there remember you've got to account for your rubber bushing that sits at the top of the spring there so you want to measure the gap just so you know you've compressed the new spring enough to squeeze back into that gap. I mean, remember, you do have a bit of movement if you push down on it, you can have about an inch or so if you push down on the hub. But yeah, that's just a note to take before you compress your new spring. So when you come to compress the new spring, you want to make sure your spring compressors are exact opposite when you compress the spring. So that leaves you a place to put your ratchet straps exactly opposite each other as well. So once you've compressed the spring, I mean, in this case, I've actually compressed it to around roughly nine inches because the gap on my car is about 11 inches. So I'm accounting for the rubber bush to sit on the top there to give it enough space to get back in the gap. So once you've compressed it down to around nine inches, you can then go ahead and put your ratchet straps back onto the spring. Now I'll stick them back onto the spring and then I'll show you how I've done them again. So once you've got your ratchet straps back on, it should look something a bit like this. Now, you don't, you don't want to really go around the bottom part because that could get trapped between the rubber bushing. So you want to go the closest rung to it. So obviously I've done the same at the top here, not around the top part. And obviously on the opposite side, it's not around the bottom bit, it's just the next one up and the same here as well. And if you can see actually they're exactly opposite each other. So. Once they're like that, you can then very carefully go ahead and remove your spring compressors, just keeping an eye on the straps at all times to make sure they're not slipping so they don't do what happened to me when I was taking the spring off. Now from this point on, you're going to need to take great caution to make sure you don't point the spring, each end of it, at your own body. So if you go to pick it up, you'll be holding it like this, away from yourself. So if one of the straps did break, and it hits something it's not going to hit you and that's the same when you put it back into the vehicle you want to hold it that way up not pointing towards your body at any time so let's go ahead and take the spring compressors off so there we have it the spring compressors are removed and as you can see the spring is still nicely compressed 
ready to drop straight back into the vehicle with the rubber bush on. Now with springs, there is a top and a bottom to them. I mean, it's actually probably easiest to locate, I'll put the light up there, to locate the writing. The writing is usually near the top where you get two little color marks on the spring, which also goes to the top. So you can see the writing is the correct way up. So that's actually where your rubber bush that came off will actually go. So if you look at the old one, you can see the markings where the spring sat. So if we just sit it in the correct way like that. And you can see your arrow is pointing towards the front of the vehicle. So let's go ahead and put the spring back in the vehicle. Now you will notice at the bottom of the spring, there's also a locating point where the, the spring actually seats into. So just make sure that's seated correctly in the bottom. And then you have to line up the light just a second. You need to line up the two holes for this rubber bush, one the main one there, and you've got a smaller hole which will also locate. Now at this point don't put your fingers in between this gap here because if the spring decided to or the straps decide to snap, you're gonna get trapped in there and that's gonna hurt. So at this point, once the spring is located and the holes are lined up, in fact I'll try and push this bush in to the body first so once you've got your spring sat in pretty much the correct position you can then go and jack the hub back up to put pressure back on the spring so you can then go ahead and remove the straps do it nice and slowly keeping a check to make sure everything locates into its correct position like it should do and again jacking up only just so it lifts off the axle stand under there just slightly so you can fully compress the spring as much as you can for the weight of the vehicle There you go, it's just lifted off the axle stand there and you'll actually see, if you look a bit closely, now you can actually see your ratchet straps are completely loose. Now at this point, it's completely up to you if you want to cut the straps off, if that's easier. And obviously you'll have to use the new set for the opposite side when you do the spring. But if you can get in there and undo them normally, then go ahead and do that way. So once you've removed your ratchet straps from the spring, you can then go ahead and obviously put your caliper back on with the two 13 mil bolts and put the two bolts back in the top of the shock absorber at the top there. They should be somewhere near, to be honest, because it does have a locator pin on the top of that. So while it's in its jacked position, that should be somewhere close to get those bolts back in as well. Now, if you're having trouble lining these two holes up because there's too much pressure on it, you can lower the jack down a little bit at this point, just to give you a bit more movement at the top there to line your bolt holes up. So once you've tightened the two 16mm bolts up and re reinstalled your brake caliper, you can then lower the jack completely down. And there you go, the new spring is installed. Now you can go ahead and jack the vehicle back up from your jacking point, so you can go ahead and remove your axle stand and put your wheel back on. I hope this video has helped you out in fitting your new springs to your vehicle and I hope everything went a little bit smoother than it did for me. Now if it did help you don't forget to click the like and subscribe and the bell notification so you get notified each time I upload and until next time guys take care.